Today's video was requested by Albert. He messaged me on Instagram and he even emailed me to make this video about my Sony a7 III settings for portrait photography. We're gonna take a look at the main options I use in the menu. We're also gonna look at how I set up my custom buttons and also look at the function menu setup. So let's get started. The first thing that we need to do is set the camera to photo mode. So I'm gonna put mine on M and then we're gonna go ahead and push menu on the camera. On the first page, so we're gonna be kind of cycling through the main options. We're not gonna go every single, go over every single option because I don't use everything. So on the first page, the main one I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to file format. We're gonna set that to raw. Under the raw file type, we're gonna do uncompressed. Now I don't shoot JPEGs, but if I do, I'm gonna have it at extra fine. And also just make sure that we're at 24 megapixels. Page two, I really don't set up anything. I just leave it as a default settings. Page three, the drive mode, you have a couple of options. You can either do single shooting or you can do high speed continuous. I typically leave it at single shooting just because I don't really shoot really fast. The only time I shoot fast is when I maybe have the model walk towards the camera and I'm gonna do natural light, then I'll change it to continuous shooting, but for more often than not, I'm gonna leave it at the single shooting. So I'm gonna go back to menu. And that's pretty much it. Now there are some memory settings that you can set for custom button one and two here. I'm not gonna cover it in this video, but that, if that's something you guys wanna see, let me know. But I do have those set up, but that's specifically set up for video. Page four, I don't change anything there. Page five, the most important one is gonna be the first one here where it says focus mode. I wanna make sure we set it to auto focus continuous. And the reason for that is that it's gonna obviously continuously focus on the face. If the model's walking towards the camera, it's gonna continuously get and pick up the eye autofocus. So that's super important for my style of work. As far as the priority set, I keep mine at balanced emphasis. And then the other one is gonna be, the other important one here is gonna be the focus area. So I typically use wide and it's going to try to detect kind of what should be in focus. Now this does usually a good job, but there's gonna be times where maybe I'm doing a wide shot and I might have a model super far away and it might struggle to figure out what I wanna have in focus. And it does happen at times when I'm doing wide shots or nighttime photos. So if I'm not in wide, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use the flexible spot. And the reason why I like this one is that my joystick in back of the camera now turns into essentially a DSLR camera. And I used to use this a lot because I wanted my camera to feel like the 5D Mark III. I came from the 5D Mark III and then I switched into the Sony system. And having that joystick as my focus really felt comfortable for me coming in from the 5D Mark III. So if I set it up this way with a small, uh, flexible, small, <laughs> flexible spot, small, I can just basically move it to where I want it to focus it at. So that's very, very helpful. And I can just half press the button to focus. So you can determine what's gonna work best for you. In my case, I'm just gonna leave it back at wide. We're gonna go back to menu. And that's pretty much it for this section. Page six, I don't have anything set here. I don't change anything, everything stays the same. Page seven, the same thing. I don't change anything, but you can take a look at my settings here if yours looks different, but I don't remember changing anything. Eight, I don't change. Nine, the only important one is to make sure that your ISO is set to 100 because that's the base ISO in the Sony camera. I'm gonna push menu again. Metering mode, I leave it at multi. I know I get this question a couple of times. Mine stays at multi. Page 10, I don't change anything that's on here. Page 11, the only thing I have different is just wireless flash. I'm not sure if you need to have that on, but I have mine on, but um, that's just the way it's set up on my camera. Page 12, I get asked a lot, what white balance do I use? And about 90% of the time, I'm gonna use auto white balance. Now, if I notice that it looks a little bit off, well then obviously I'm gonna change it to something else, but I'm gonna leave mine at auto. Now the important one here is the DRO slash auto HDR. Now this setting I absolutely hate and you wanna make sure it's off because for a whole year of shooting with the Sony a7 III, what would happen is 
if you have this on, what it does is that it changes the preview in back of the camera. So in the back of the camera, the photo will look great. It looks like it's exposed perfectly, it looks awesome. And then when you import it into Lightroom, for example, what would happen is the exposure would look great for a second and then it would just get completely dark and it would make my image completely, completely dark and I hated it. And then I learned this from Nick Page. He has a YouTube channel. I'm gonna, send, I'm gonna put the link there if you guys wanna check out the video where he talked about taking the setting off. And now whenever I import, everything looks crisp and clean. So thank you, Nick Page, for that. As far as my creative styles, I leave it at standard. And the picture profile I have off. That's another question I get a lot. Page 13, don't really change anything here and page 14 as well, don't change anything. Now we're gonna go to page two, and I'm gonna skip about the first three, because those are all more related to video, and I'm gonna go to page four, and the important one here is gonna be to turn off the electronic front curtain shutter. You're gonna make sure that's off because if you leave that on and use flash, like most of my work is with flash, what you're gonna get is a bunch of lines that show up in your images and you don't want that to happen, of course. So make sure that that's turned off. Also make sure that steady shot is turned on for the um, image stabilization. Page five, I don't change that. Page six, this one's actually pretty cool, the display button. So I'm gonna kind of briefly go over this one. When I go to display button, I'm gonna hit set and I'm gonna go to monitor, and basically what this means is what do you want the back of the uh, camera to show when you're changing the displays? Like I like to have the levels show up, I like the histogram, the no display info, and the display all. Now if you don't wanna see the display all ever show up, then you just uncheck it. So those are the four that I like to have on. I'm gonna hit enter there. If I go back, I can even adjust what I wanna see in the viewfinder. So if I go to finder, the only things I wanna see is the histogram and then no display at all. I don't wanna have all this junk as I'm shooting, so I uncheck that, so I'm gonna hit enter there. Let's go back to menu. I do like having the grid to help me frame for the rule of thirds. Page seven, the most important one, this is the one that I really love, it's the auto review feature. So the way I set my camera is, as I'm shooting and I have the camera up, I take the shot, what happens is there's a preview inside the electronic viewfinder so that I can see what the lighting looked like, what the pose looked like, and I don't have to kind of chimp and look down at my camera. So I set that to two seconds. Now sometimes I will turn this off when I'm doing natural light and I'm doing fast paced movements. I don't want that little preview to be interrupting as I'm shooting. Page eight, the only thing I did change was the dial setup, which is the AV to TV, only because I was familiar with the Canon cameras, so I switched that. And we're gonna come back to the custom buttons right here, but I'm just gonna finish it off with page nine. I do have audio signals off, so the camera will not beep as I'm focusing, so I turn that feature off. So we're gonna go back to page eight, and we're gonna set up the custom buttons for photos, and that's gonna be the first icon. The second one's for video, the third one is for playback. So since this is about photos, we're gonna go to the first one. And when I hit custom key, I can set my control wheel, and I set mine to aperture because I came from the 5D Mark III and I was just used to it that way. Custom button one is gonna be the focus area so that I can switch from wide focus to flexible spots or zone focus. This is very helpful for if you're doing video. Custom button two is the focus mode, which we talked about earlier, and I just leave mine on continuous auto focus, so I don't really change this one a lot. This is more good for video when I wanna to go to maybe manual focus. Custom button three, we have it set to white balance. So custom button four, I have it set to super 35 mode, so that if I'm using an APS-C lens, I can then crop in. So for example, if I'm using a 16 millimeter APS-C lens, and then I put it on my full frame Sony camera, I can then turn that 16 millimeter into a 24 and crop in. In addition to that, I can also use full frame lenses on the Sony a7 III and I can crop in just a little bit so I can get some extra focal length. Now I've done this with client work at school. Sometimes I'll do headshots for the teachers and I have my 55 millimeter and I wanna maybe get a little bit more focal length so I can get that extra depth of field. 
and I can get that compression and I'll set that. So the 55 then jumps into maybe like a 70, 75. I'll put the number up here. And what's cool about that is I get that compression, but keep in mind when I do this with full frame lenses, I am gonna be losing some megapixels. And if I'm not mistaken, I think it turns the a7 III RAW files into 10 megapixels. So you have to think about when you're doing this, what is your situation? So when I was doing the headshots, they were mainly for small prints and they were just for web-based stuff. So 10 megapixels was gonna be totally fine. On page two, we got the multi-select center button. I have mine set to focus standard. The center button, I have center lock on autofocus. The left is gonna be for the drive mode. The right button is gonna be for ISO. And then the down button, the face priority and autofocus. On page three, the AEL button, the shot result preview is super important for me because what ends up happening, because I shoot off camera flash and the moment I put a trigger on the camera, what happens is the camera automatically tries to balance the light in the scene. So in other words, if I'm trying to get my ambient and I adjust it the way I want, the moment I put the trigger on, it kind of overrides all those settings. And now when I'm trying to adjust, I'm not getting the accurate representation through my viewfinder. So if I hold down the AEL button and for the shot result preview, I can then see what the exposure looks like without that auto exposure because of the trigger. Now the other option too is to turn off the trigger and turn it on, which is totally fine, but there's some triggers, like I was using the Westcott FJ400, it takes a little bit longer to turn it off because you gotta push and hold, and that's gonna take a little bit of a longer process. So I like having this set so I can just push and hold it, it turns it off, and then I can see the result preview and then let it go, and then I can go and adjust my flash settings. This one is super important for off-camera flash users. The autofocus on, that's where I have my eye autofocus, and then the focus hold button I have set to focus hold. Next, we're gonna go into the custom settings for the playback options, and we're gonna set up one option that I learned from Jason Vong that was like super helpful, so I'm gonna push menu, and then I'm gonna go to the third option where it says custom key here. And I'm gonna to go to custom button three and we're gonna set this to rating. And the reason why this is super powerful is that as I'm doing client shoots, especially for my school, when I'm photographing all the sports teams, you know, I don't have a lot of time to then import and try to figure out, okay, what photos does this student want or what photos do they want for this specific portrait for the sports poster. So right after I get the photo, literally right after I get the team's photo, I show it to the players and I tell them, look, take a look at it push C3 and let me know and star the photo. So I know exactly when I import into Capture One or Lightroom, I know exactly what photo I'm gonna be working with. And it saves me a ton of time instead of having them come into my classroom, then select the photos. They just get it immediately right after I take the photo. So now we're gonna go back to the menu and we're gonna go to the function menu setup. Now I don't use this a lot, but I do wanna show you guys what I have set up in my camera. So upper one, I have the shoot mode, I have white balance, focus mode, the focus area, five is for the audio record levels when I'm doing video, and function six is the drive mode. Page two, I have the frame rate, the zebra display, the zebra levels, the face priority and autofocus, the grid line, and the marker display. So what this is gonna do, if I push the FN button in back of the camera, I get quick access to these options. Now a lot of these options, we already have them set in the custom keys, so I don't use this very often, but it is there for those of you that may wanna have an additional options. So keep in mind that these settings are not gonna be perfect for everybody. These are what works for me. Feel free to customize the settings to the way you like to shoot. So the last option I wanna show you is how to make your own custom menu so that you can make your workflow a little bit faster and have easy access to options using the menu on a dedicated page. So we're gonna push menu in back of the camera and we're gonna to go to the My Menu section, the star. So here's some of the options that I use a lot is viewfinder brightness, the s &Q exposure mode, the record settings for video, the s &Q settings, the auto review, which is super helpful because sometimes I go from shooting natural light, um, doing like 
fast paced candid shots. And then I talked about earlier why I like the two seconds. And then of course I always format. So if I wanna add items to a page, all I gotta do is go to the third one or second one, depending on how many pages you have. I'm gonna then go to add item and you have access to all of the menu items so that you can have easy access to them. So I'm just gonna add a random one here. I'm just gonna add ISO for the heck of it. And then here it says on page two, and I'm gonna hit the enter button and it's added. So now, in other words, when I push menu in back of the camera, instead of having to cycle through all of these menus, I can just go to the star and I have easy access to the main options that I always use. And that concludes our video. We covered todo el pedo. Now, if you guys have any suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. By all means, my settings are not perfect. It's not gonna work for everybody. So keep an open mind as you look at my settings and figure out what's gonna work best for you guys. Peace out, stay safe, and I'll see you guys on the next one.